Hi, my name is Rachel Niagara. Listen, thank you so much for coming back to our channel. Look, we love you so much, right? Listen, we're talking about today, am I capable of love? Help me, please. Am I capable of love? So far in my life, things have just been playing out a certain way. Am I capable of love? Listen, we're going to talk about it. You don't want to miss it, right? Listen, right after this, we're going to get into it. Before we start, I want to give a shout out to those of you when you see the video pop up you click on listen thank you so much we love you amen if you would like to you can share the video with someone else uh these teachings are very important right uh what is the use of uh walking by faith if we choose not to walk amen we are a nation that walks right we walk we move forward amen and so with that being said we're going to get right into it the scripture we're coming out of is going to be 1 Corinthians chapter 13. The title says, Help. Am I capable of love? You know me. We like to start with reading the definition of what love is. The dictionary say love is an intense feeling of deep affection. The second definition says, a great interest and pleasure in something. The second definition says, a great interest and pleasure in something. Definition three, a person or thing that one loves. You and I know that love is God. We also know that God is love. And with that being said, stated, when I look at these definitions, it shows me what I'm supposed to be and how I'm supposed to be interacting with the person of love. There is no way to explain what love is without telling you who God is. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom. The power, the glory forever. Amen. Listen to this. A lot of times people feel like they are in the positioning of not really knowing if they are capable of receiving love. Many times they are in a position of not really feeling like they are capable of giving love out. And the reason being is because love has the, the, the best and most important ingredient in the word love is the person love. Does that make sense? The word love, it cannot be understood to, the, to its depth without the person love. The person love shows us what the word love means and many times people go through life not knowing the person love or not really believing that they need the person love right and, and they try to use the word love without the person love and it doesn't work it doesn't work many times we can uh, believe that love is uh, an emotion that love is a feeling and that love is like Valentine's Day 
okay? And while love is emotion and love is feeling, when we try to use emotion and feeling without the person love, which is God, then we end up with the same thing. We end up with the same feeling. I'm not able to love anyone and no one else is capable of loving me. It is because we miss the main ingredient. The person love brings meaning to the word love. When I look at definition number one, it says an intense feeling or deep affection. In order for you and I to experience this life, knowing how love feels, knowing that I can love someone else and knowing that someone else can love me, uh, and with, the, with simplifying it, saying that as long as that person has God within them, they can experience loving me too. If a person does not have or have not welcomed God, talking about the Lord of hosts, if they have not welcomed the Lord of hosts into their hearts, they are not capable of loving you the way you are going to want and desire love. Because many times people have the word love but not have the person love. Does that make sense? Definition one says an intense feeling or deep affection. In order for you and I to experience the depthness of love, we have to uh, experience this intense feeling, this deep affection toward God. Yes, we do. We have to experience this intense feeling, this deep affection toward God. And in doing that, we create a beautiful relationship. Mm -hmm. And with that relationship, the Lord then shows us how to love somebody else. The Lord then shows us how to do what to do. Amen. He shows us. And a lot of times, because wisdom is sorrowful, it's acquainted with much grief. Uh, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And once we enter into the relationship with the Lord, we begin to, to grab a hold of the fear of the Lord. Okay. And in doing that, we gain a wisdom. And wisdom, the wisdom is loving, it's great, but it's also sorrowful. And it's also acquainted with grief because as we continue to go through this life, we realize that there are so many people that settle at the word love and they neglect, they reject, and they've heard other people tell them that they do not have to receive the person love in order to utilize the word love. And that's a lie. So here you are. You've gotten this revelation that in order to use the word love in its entirety, I have to know the person love. And he brings definition to the word love. And now other people can feel my love. But how many other people know that in your workplace? How many other people know that? in the shopping centers, in the supermarkets. How many other people know this in the group meetings? How many other people know that in order to use the word love, you have to know and be connected to the person love, and then he shows us how to use the word love. Right? So now here you are feeling all alone. Jesus says, I'll be with you even until the end. And I want you to know you are not alone. There are many of us that know in order to use the word love, we have to have the person love. So many times, because we come into this revelation, in order to use the word love, 
I have to have the person love. Many times we come into this revelation without anybody else around us have this revelation. We begin to feel like we are unlovable. Why? Because there are many people that are not going to love you to the same depth. You might be called extra. You might even be called the word fake. You're fake. Your love is fake. Nobody does that. When somebody talk about you, you don't go buy them a gift. That's fake. She's fake. He's fake. And in experiencing words like this that can hurt a person, experiencing uh, words like this, it, it, it can cause you to feel unlovable. Why? Because you've opened up another chapter now of who love is who is love the Lord tells us in his word who he is he tells us to reflect him and in reflecting him it's going to look different it's going to look like they are mad at me but I'm going to get them a present anyway it's going to look like they're frowning at me, but I'm going to smile at them. It's going to look like fakeness. It's going to look like that. This is when the word comes into play if you suffer with me. Because when we say we're going to be a part of the kingdom of God, these are the things that we deal with on a daily basis. These are the things that we deal with. Having the revelation that in order to use the word love, we need the person love. We begin to go through a season and seasons of people not really understanding us. You look different. You're acting different. You're responding different. And Jesus comes to bring that difference. But many times that is the very thing people are afraid of people are afraid of being different everybody wants to be alike everybody wants to be the same everybody wants to be loved everybody 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 wants to hang together everybody wants to be in the same crowd everybody wants to but is there one that is willing to catch a revelation and to stand alone knowing that God knows best and knowing that he has a plan for your life have you ever been in a place in your life I've been in a place in my life where I thought you know this revelation of love and love is not fun because rarely do you ever find anyone else that really, really believes this wholeheartedly. That really believes that the way we're supposed to act, the way we're supposed to treat each other, is the way that the word has stated it. Rarely do we find another that believes that, yes, I'm supposed to do that. Rarely do we find that. And so many times we can just not fall back but step back i'm gonna step back right i'm gonna step back from allowing the lord's uh word to be my mirror i'm gonna step back from allowing uh the definition of love to be explained with the person of love because it's not popular when i look around there's nobody doing it like this when I look around, everybody, it's, everybody wants to be the same. Everybody wants to talk the same. Everybody wants to walk the same. Everybody wants to act the same. And then here you are. Out of all of the little white memes, you're the red one in the middle. Does that sound fun? This is why Jesus the Christ said, if you suffer with me, 
because you're going, when you step outside of the circle, you're going to suffer. You're going to feel like that you are giving more than anybody else. But when we look at the word, do you believe that that Jesus the Christ gave more than everybody else? He did. He went through the land healing. He went through the land delivering. He went through the land giving hope to those that felt hopeless. He went through the land giving miracles, signs, wonders. He went through the land being led of God. And while that's great, if we confuse what people say love is with what the scriptures say love is, you and I will end up very, very, very broken hearted, very, very, very disappointed because what people say love is, they're just going by the word love, an intense feeling or deep affection, a great interest and pleasure in something, a person or thing that one loves. They're just going by the word love. But when me and you start going by the person love, we realize that the children of Israel turned against God so many times. He loved them. We realize that the very ones Jesus the Christ was put on a cross for, these were the ones that wanted him dead. The very ones he gave his life for, they wanted him dead. That is the definition of love. The definition of love is doing something in spite of, loving people in spite of. This is the definition of love. Love is God and God is love. Love is God and God is love. And while we've been walking this earth, they've been doing their best to recreate, to re-examine, to give a whole nother definition to what love is. And when you and I begin to go on these little definitions that they give us from grade school on up, we get to go on these definitions of what love is. Love is, let's, you know, we're holding hands and we're skipping through. No, 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 no. Love is uh, warning someone and then running for your life because the same person you just warned because you want them to make it in, the same people you just warned, these same people want to unalive you. That's love. Love is not them wanting to unalive you, but love is being able and willing to still give the truth even though they want you unalived. And with something like this, they don't throw a Valentine's party. With something like this, they don't write books and put great big red hearts on it and great big kisses on it. When we are talking about the gospel of Jesus the Christ, this is the spirit of prophecy this is where the rubber meets the road. This is when we understand that no, it's not that you're unlovable, especially if you are one that expressed going above and beyond. It's not that you're unlovable. It's that many people have not received the revelation of what and who love is. And so it's me and your job to go through the land wherever we are and to show, to be, to instruct, to lead, to guide. It, as we're being led, as we're being guided into all truth and righteousness, it's my and your job to our next door neighbors to show who love is, to show what love is, and who love is all about. 
it is up to me and you to walk the straight and narrow. Is it hard? Of course it's hard. But where we've got it misconstrued is we took the world's definition of love and we've tried to apply it in the church and it doesn't work. What happens is we end up feeling alone, abandoned, rejected. Why? Because who's really teaching the true revelation of who love is? And when we tell them who love is, they have to then connect who love is to the word love. And when we match up who love is to the word they've given us called love, we realize we have two different things. The world says love is when you love people that love you. God says love is when we love people that love us and when we love people that don't love us. When we share intense feelings and deep affection with Abba Father, then we can share intense feeling and deep affection with people that don't mean us any good. Now, I'm not saying go out and throw your heart to every Tom, Dick, and Harry because in a relationship with God, he teaches us, he instructs us on who to open all the way up to and who to just uh, extend that godly love to. Everybody can't be opened all the way up to because there are many, you better hear me, there are those that are waiting for you to just open up just a little bit and they're coming with a knife. So how do we protect ourselves when we're using this word, love we trust Abba this is why it's so important to have the Holy Ghost because he's going to lead us on who to open up to don't 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 do that okay yes but only so much Now, many will say, you're supposed to open up to everybody and you're supposed to do this to everybody. And when you stop, when you think, when you look, you realize they're bitter. They're resentful. They're they're hateful. And and, and, and up front, it's kind of hard to tell because, you know, we have the scriptures to hide behind. But when you just look at how they treat people, how they treat the people that they feel like is just really not that important. How they treat the bus boy. How they treat the waiters. When you look at how they treat people that they feel is just it's just a little beneath me, you realize, no, that is not what the Lord is leading me to do. Because the Lord wants what's best for us. And when we are led by the Holy Ghost, he shows us, no. He shows us, yes. But when he says, no, don't open up, it doesn't mean that we don't show a godly love. It doesn't mean that I don't go above and beyond if I see that that person is in trouble. Uh, You know, it doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean we become hateful and shun. It doesn't mean that. We still have love, but there's a difference when we open ourselves up, you know, that secret part the part that nobody else is able to to come into and to explore that part. The part that is pure, the part that is undefiled, the part that is you at your core. Everybody can't come into the part that is you at your core. If you continue to let everybody into you at your core, We continue to have the same cycle, the same misunderstandings, the same. But when we get into the word of God and when we come into contact with people, that same entrance, that same opening up, we open up the prophecy of Jesus. This is why we are witnesses. 
instead of opening all the way up into who I am, I open up the prophecy of Jesus and begin to tell someone else about who God is. And then as the Holy Ghost begin to lead me ab about what parts of me that he wants me to share while I'm witnessing. That's different. That's different than opening myself all the way up and just letting people come in, abuse and misuse and mishandle and just, no. As we keep walking, the Lord gives us wisdom of how to do it. So now I'm opening up the prophecy of who Jesus is. And now he's leading me to share a testimony of mine. But that secret part, that part, that core, that pure, that Well, that is what we give and the intimacy of intense and deep affection of prayer, great interest and pleasure and seeking God's face, great intense and deep affection of wanting to know, Lord, what is it that you require of me? Great intense and deep affection. In his presence, I can show my weakness. That's love. I can show who I am. I can show what I'm sad about. I can show what makes me excited. I can show. And he just, he loves it. He loves to see. He loves to hear what's making me sad. He loves to hear my testimonies. He loves to hear me praise him he loves to hear and as we continue in this relationship with Abba he begin to dig about our tree he begin to give us more depth and with this depth we as we keep continue going in this life we realize that what used to make me mad don't really make me mad anymore. It's not because, you know, it's, it just happened. No, it's because as we keep walking this walk by faith and knowing that love, the word love, has the definition of the person love, and without the two, it just doesn't work. It's temporary. It's temporary. It's short-lived. God is love. Abba is the deepest, most beautiful spirit that we can ever behold. And living a life without the definition of who love is, is void. When we put the two loves beside each other, we put the word love beside the person love, we realize that the word love is missing something. Or should I say someone? Love. Do you have the person love on today? In your time, I would like for you to read 1 Corinthians chapter 13. It shows us that no matter how much we feel like we do, we can go, 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 go. If we don't have the person love, we don't have anything. 